for the past two days, we started to read the introduction of chapter seven, right concentration, the first three paragraphs. Okay, two, three. Today, we are going to dive into another section called the development of concentration. Concentration can be developed through either of two methods, either as the goal of a system of practice directed expressly towards the attainment of deep concentration at the level of absorption, or as the incidental accompaniment of the path intended to generate insight. The former method is called the development of serenity, samatha bhavana. The second development of insight, vivasana bhavana. Both parts share certain preliminary requirements. For both, moral discipline must be purified. The various impediments must be severed. The meditator must seek out suitable instruction, preferably from a personal teacher, and must resort to a dwelling conducive to practice. Once these preliminaries have been dispensed with, the meditator on the path of serenity has to obtain an object of meditation, something to be used as a focal point for developing concentration. Let's take a look at the footnotes 61. This is a brief overview. If you want to see the full exposition, take a look at Visuddhi Manga. Okay, this paragraph intru introduces the two methods of concentration. The first one, aim towards the attainment of deep concentration or absorption. Yeah. It will explain further below what this means. This method is called the development of serenity, samatha bhavana, which will lead to all kinds of the stages of absorption. Yeah. The second method as the incidental accompaniment of the path to generate insight. Let's take a look. Incidental. Mm -hmm. Happening as a minor accompaniment to something else. Happening as a result of an activity. The second way is for the development of insight. So the two methods are serenity and insight. Both methods, both paths share certain preliminary requirements. What are those two? First, moral discipline must be purified. All our precepts, the one that we, the components that we covered much earlier, all the right actions, right speech, right livelihood. The various impediments must be severed. Okay. Let's define impediments. A hindrance or obstruction in doing something. A defect in a person's speech, such as a lips, lisp, or stammer. That's the second requirement. The third requirement, the meditator must seek out suitable instruction, preferably from a teacher. The last requirement must resort to a dwelling conducive to practice. Yeah. Now let's take a look at the requirements. Moral discipline must be purified. Are your moral discipline purified? 
only each of us would know how purified our moral discipline is. Yeah? Maybe, maybe we can see some other people, how they act, how they conduct, but from the heart, only one truly knows how purified you are regarding moral discipline. Yeah? You will be your own judge. Various impediments must be severe. I'm not exactly sure what this means. Possibly referring to the five hindrances. Uh, any of you have idea? Yeah. Yeah. I think it could refer to the five hindrances. Yeah. And the third one, seeking out a suitable instruction, preferably from a teacher. Some of you who attended the Buddha Mass Retreat may have felt the benefit of this when there's an instruction from a very qualified teacher like Duong Po, Viva Damu. Wow. You can feel, you can notice the difference compared to when there's no, there's no teacher to guide us. Third requirement, the last requirement, resort to a dwelling conducive to practice. Mm, is my house conducive when I do the retreat? Uh, not exactly. <laughs> the bed is just beside here. I think like Choi Kwon mentioned, whenever, whenever I'm so sleepy, it's so tempting to just sleep in the bed. Yeah. So what is a dwelling conducive to practice? Some people have retreats in a very luxurious hotel, and I'm not sure if that will work as well. <laughs> uh, like a quite expensive hundred, two hundred dollars a night. Yeah. Have any of you tried it? Retreat in the hotel? No. Okay. Yeah. And well, in the sutta, it is usually in the forest or in empty huts. But nowadays, not sure where to find it in Singapore. <laughs> Maybe go to Merichi and meditate. Uh, possible. Go to the treetop walk. You know, in the in the treetop bridge, you sit down there and meditate. <laughs> oh, you will, people will shout at you. Don't block the road. The monkeys will come and disturb you. No, the monkey is not the issue. You have to endure the monkey. <laughs> okay. I think there is also some forest in Singapore, that true forest that is some brave adventurers I have seen in the news. They actually walk off the trail to the forest. But this can be dangerous, especially if you're not used to such a place. And the one that appeared in the news, they got lost and they have to be rescued by the SCDF or something. Yeah. Okay, that's just one of the few possible places. <laughs> Once these requirements, these preliminaries has been dispensed with, has been dealt with, have been, has been tackled, the meditator on the path of serenity, the Samatha Bhavana, has to obtain an object of meditation. Something to be used as a focal point for developing concentration. What are this object of meditation? Let's read on to find out. Okay, who shall read next? Sister, Sister Billy, shall I like to read? Thank you. If the meditator has a qualified teacher, the teacher will probably assign him an object judge to be appropriate for his temperament. Temperament. If he doesn't have a teacher, he will have to select an object himself, 
perhaps after some experimentation. The meditation manuals collected subjects of serenity meditation into a set of 40 called places of work, kamatana. Since they are places, since they are the places where the meditator does the work of practice, the 40 may be listed as follows. 10 kasinas, 10 unattractive objects, dasa absuba, 10 recollections, dasa anusatyo, 4 sublime states, kataro rama vihara, 4 immaterial states, katara, kataro arupa, one perception, ika sanya, one analysis, ika bawatana. Okay, thanks, Sister Billy. Uh, these are the 40 objects listed <laughs> for an object of meditation. And then the question arises, which one should we choose? Each object of meditation is suitable for a certain disposition. Yeah. We'll explain much further. Uh, will explain in greater details below. Uh, but the reason that there are so many objects to choose from is that some objects are more suitable for some people to progress from their position, from their current level. Okay. Sister Billy, would you like to nominate the next person to read? Um, can I ask uh, Sister Esther? Mm. The casinas are devices representing certain primordial qualities. Four represents, four represents the primary, primary elements, the earth, water, fire, and air kasinas. Four represent colors, the blue, yellow, red, and white kasinas. And the other two are the light and the space kasinas. Each kasina is a concrete object representative of the universal quality, quality it signifies. Thus, an earth kasina would be a circular disk filled with clay. To develop concentration on the earth kasina, the meditator sets the disc in front of him, fixes his gaze on it, and contemplates earth, earth. A similar method is used for the other kasinas with appropriate changes to fit the case. Thanks, sis Esther. Kasinas represent primordial qualities. Let's take a look what is primordial. Existing at all from the beginning of time, prime of all, basic and fundamental, or in the biology, in the earliest stage of development. The four represent the four elements earth, water, fire, and air. Another four represents colors blue, yellow, red, and white. The other two are light and space. Each casino is a concrete object representative of the quality that it represents, that it signifies. For example, earth casinas. Then you will take a circular disc and then you put a lot of clays on it. <laughs> and then how to meditate on it? You put the disc of clay in front of you, fixes your gaze on it. <laughs> and then Contemplate earth, earth, earth. Yeah. And similar method can be used for other casinas. And usually we use our breath as our object of meditation. But if you use casina, this is the, the way that's written here. Any of you tried this before? Meditating on the casino? Uh, I don't think many people try this. Maybe some occasions we should try it. 
Okay, that's about the casinas. Let's continue with the next 10 objects. Sister Esther, would you like to nominate the next person to read? Sister Saikia. Thank you. Um, the 10 unattractive objects are corpses in different stages of decomposition. This subject appears similar to the contemplation of bodily decay in the mindfulness of the body. And in fact, in olden times, the cremation ground was recommended as the most appropriate place for both. But the two meditation differs in emphasis. In the mindfulness exercise, stress falls on the application of reflective thought. The sight of the decaying corpse serving as a stimulus for consideration of one's own eventual death and disintegration. In this exercise, the use of reflective thought is discouraged. The stress instead falls on one-pointed mental fixation on the object. The less thought, the better. Hmm. Thanks again. Okay. In this paragraph, we are back again to the contemplation of corpses. We have covered this one as mentioned here uh, in the previous chapter, mindfulness of the body. There is a part that we, uh, we are contemplating the bodily decay. In the olden times, the cremation ground was recommended. Uh, I heard Ajahn Chah uh, if I recall correctly, he frequently used the cremation ground as the place for meditation. Yeah. I need to double check this. Yeah. But this is what I can recall. The two meditation differs in the emphasis. The previous one in the mindfulness exercise. The application is for reflection, reflective thought. The sight of the decaying corpse serving as a stimulus for consideration, contemplation of one's own eventual death and disintegration. In this one, however, in this concentration exercise, the use of reflective thought is discouraged. The stress instead falls on one-pointed mental fixation on the object solely focus on the object and try to have less thoughts if possible. The less thought, the better. Okay, I think we cover one more paragraph. Sai Kian, would you like to nominate? Uh, I think. Okay. The 10 recollections form a miscellaneous collection. The first three are devotional meditations on the qualities of the Triple Gem, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. They use as their basis standard formulas that have come down in the suttas. The next three recollections also rely on ancient formulas, the meditations on morality, generosity, and the potential for divine-like qualities in oneself, then come mindfulness of death, the contemplation of the unattractive nature of the body, mindfulness of breathing, and lastly, the recollection of peace, a discursive meditation on Nibbana. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Aki. Mm -hmm. Okay. The 10 recollections, firstly, the triple gems, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. The used as the basis, standard formulas that have come down in the suttas. The next three recollections on morality, generosity, and potential for defined like qualities in oneself. The last set is mindfulness of death, contemplation of the unattractive nature of the body, 
mindfulness of breathing. And the last one, recollection of peace, a discursive meditation on Nibbana. Yeah. These sets are not explained further. But this just forms a miscellaneous collection. Any of you would like to add anything before we wrap up for today? Uh, I think the, the paragraph above did talk about there should be a teacher. And I think Bhikkhu um, Bodhi said that if there is no teacher, then perhaps after some experimentation, I so I was thinking then, you know, reading on all these, um, these 40 places of work, I think it's better not to do it by ourselves to experiment. It, you know, if you really want to try, we should really approach qualified teachers to try because otherwise we can go weird. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the reason why uh, widely taught is the meditation on breath or air for the matter. Yeah. Uh, you're afraid that there's something that comes to my mind. Yeah. Uh, you are afraid that the meditation could go the wrong way and you will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I heard of people in Thailand uh, practicing like they try to sleep in, in a coffin. I'm not sure whether that falls under these unattractive objects. I don't know, uh, quite a number of people went to try, but I have not tried. But I don't know how you, how it's a process, you know, how they how they do it. Yeah. Just some thoughts going through my mind. Yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, as we covered earlier in the introduction, there is such a thing as the wrong concentration. For example, like a sniper being so concentrated on the object of the target, you know. I have to be concentrated to kill this one person. Yeah? It's so fixated on the object. So there is such a thing. <laughs> it's possible. And it's true. If possible, you uh, preferably get the teacher. Yeah. But it's also possible to be self-taught. In fact, the Buddha himself is a self-taught. <laughs> I mean, he, he has sick a teacher before, but eventually he reached enlightenment on his own. Yes, I can. Uh, I think um, we need to read more. I mean, not just experiment as you, you see the description and then you just go and do it. I think there are uh, ways to follow. Like I, I heard before from one monk, he made a dish of a, a certain size, certain dimension, a white colored disc. Then he used that as the contemplative object. That is for the white color, the color of white. And then, um, of course, there has to be steps of how you, you do it. But eventually, after concentrating on that, that white disc, whatever that's outside should, after that, become as clear when you close your eyes and uh, meditate for a long time, that this should appear the same as it is whatever that is outside, should be inside. Then after that, I don't know, he said, you, you, you can sort of like, uh, look at the ages, must be very clear and, and defined of the, the white piece, the kind of thing. Then from there also there's progression of making it bigger and bigger, you know, until it occupies the whole space and do the whole thing is very bright kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I think Sister Didi is correct. We have to be under guidance. Huh? But uh, if you want to try out some of the things, at least you have to go and read uh, more into it. Like what, what to do, you know, if if let's say something go wrong <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether Marcel um, actually I, I, I'm thinking it could be quite fun you know, to, to contemplate on different objects instead of just always our, our breath yeah. 
just like just like uh, during the previous retreat when uh, Long Port Viradamo said about uh, you know the sound sound con concentration. I mean, bringing the awareness to to bringing the sound into the awareness. You know, something new uh, for you to try. You know? So if there's opportunity, I think I would like to try. <laughs> Okay, thanks for the comments. Okay, any more? Any more questions or comments? If not, let's do a dedication. Yen Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao Yen De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao Pu Yen Zhi Zhang Xi Xiao Zhu Shi Shi Chang Xing Pu Sa Dao Amitavo Here we meet again. May we be guided by the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Have a casino day. <laughs> casino, not casino. Don't go and gamble. <laughs> Thanks everyone for participating. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye bye.